but it looks very similar to a chayote, which is kind of like a small melon type of a vegetable. And in fact, I'm just gonna start with that immediately. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. thank you. It's another freezing cold morning. I'm sitting at my laptop this morning and I am warming myself with a cup of tea and we just opened the window to get that sunlight. That sunlight makes all the difference. And this is a pretty nice office today as well. I'm gonna sit here and try to get a little bit of um, picture editing done. And then after that, we're gonna have breakfast and then we're gonna head, start driving back to Timpu. And now it is time for breakfast. So I am starting off with my power tea, Bhutanese butter tea. Mm. Oh yeah. That is good. It's a, a salty version today, and yeah, nice and salty and very buttery. It tastes good. Oh. Thank you, Cheche. Cheche is serving me some of the eze, and today for breakfast, we are having rice and omelet, and this is Bhutanese white rice, which is a little bit different from the, normally we've been eating Bhutanese red rice, and so, yeah, I don't think I've even eaten white rice actually since being here. And then I also just got a little bit of that cottage cheese fried in butter that we had last night, left over from last night, heated fresh. This is a good, simple, and wonderful, my kind of a breakfast. Oh, and that, that rice is really fluffy feeling. I gotta squeeze myself a, a ball of rice, and I'm gonna break off a, a piece of omelet and eat it with that little ball of rice plus some of that easy mm. mm -hmm. oh that is so good mm. that rice it's kind of similar to basmati rice um, it's nice and fluffy and then with that that's the same easy that we had last night just the chopped up green chilies with that tree tomato I think there are some green onions in there as well, and a little bit of cottage cheese for flavor. Mmm. Yeah, that is like the purest of all cottage cheese. Hmm? Oh, metric, you know. That is a good breakfast again. We are all packed up and ready to go and just taking a little walk around the turnip field. There are some gigantic turnips and radishes in the field and we're gonna start driving back to Timpu. On the drive up the mountain, we just came across some yaks, so we just stopped to take some photos. I'm kind of scared of getting too close though. But I think they're pretty nice. They're just hanging out, chilling. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, big dog. 
establishing uh, two kitchens. Okay. One uh, traditional kitchen. Oh, traditional kitchen. And okay. one modern kitchen. Oh, so wow. The traditional kitchen is not yet uh, uh, accomplished. My wife, Gelmo. Okay. <laughs> and the Nurbu staff. Wow, very nice. Yeah. So, the traditional kitchen is not yet uh, uh, finished. Okay. But I think hopefully we soon we will complete this one and we will be using this one as well. We drove for about four hours and we arrived to Wangdu and we're just stopping by for lunch at a place called Wangdu Eco Lodge. And this is a newly opened Eco Lodge. It's really nice, a great view of where the, the rivers meet as well as the Wangdu Zong, which is being rebuilt after a recent fire. Uh, but this is a really nice place, and the owner is actually the author of a Bhutanese cookbook, and he's a really nice guy. He showed us around, and we're gonna have lunch here, and I'm not sure what we're gonna eat yet. Thank you. There's a real variety of different dishes that we have. This plate, we have the red rice. There are some noodles, which are from the Bumtang district of Bhutan. Some mushrooms. These are some potatoes. And then this is uh, like a little uh, bit of beef with tofu. And then this is the uh, pumpkin soup. There's some side dishes as well. Oh, I like this pumpkin soup. Just nice pieces of pumpkin. Mmm. Oh, that is good. The natural taste of the pumpkin, and then it has a little bit of a kind of a smoky flavor. Almost like, it almost tastes like bacon. I will start with adding some of the eze to my rice. This is made with uh, fresh chilies, and it looks like there's some cheese in here as well. Okay, add some of that. Oh, that looks delicious. This is a beautiful looking version of imadatsi, which is chilies and cheese, and there's also spinach in here. That's a nice, nice addition. Oh, that looks beautiful. Okay. We call it Semchu Beka. Semchu Beka. Semchu Beka. Semchu Beka. Yeah, Semchu Beka. That's it. But it looks very similar to a chayote, which is kind of like a small melon type of a vegetable. Okay, let me add some of this to my rice. Oh, looks delicious. And in fact, I'm just gonna start with that immediately. It's very similar to a winter melon with a thick cheese sauce, but it's not too rich, but just good flavor and mm, creamy as well. I like the addition of spinach in there. The spinach has a little bit of a bitter taste, which is really good. And then, yeah, it actually complements the chilies and the cheese really nicely. Okay, and I also really want to try some of this beef, minced beef with tofu. I don't think that's a... That's a Bhutanese dish I have not tried yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is marvelous. That tastes like, yeah, like minced beef. I'm not sure if I taste the tofu very lightly. And then it has kind of a brown beef gravy flavor to it, but like a, a really good flavor and maybe a little bit of ginger as well. Jangun, Jangburi. And they look very similar to udon. And I think they are spiced with, I'm not sure what, and then some green onions. Oh, you can taste the garlic on them. Yeah, that's almost identical to Japanese udon, uh, but very, tastes very fresh and very handmade. And then I love that, just that um, kind of like, I don't like a glaze of garlic and Sichuan pepper. Oh, that gives it some good flavor. Okay, let me try this potato. It looks like a barbecue sauce potato. Oh, wow. Mmm, that is really good. It's kind of crispy on the outside. Then, mm-hmm. That does taste kind of like a tangy barbecue sauce. It's like a, an entire potato french fry coated in barbecue sauce. And I love the potatoes because they have that, that silky texture to them instead of being dry and starchy. Just finished with lunch. That was an incredibly good meal and really good quality food as well. Everything prepared home style. I'm now gonna have dessert. 
And this is, I believe, a fried banana and maybe drizzled in a little bit of honey. Oh, that is hot. Mm. That is freshly fried. It's crispy, and then the banana is really kind of almost like custardy on the inside. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. And also, the owner, he's Really cool guy. He's working on a second edition of his Bhutanese food cookbook, and so he's he's also he's actually uh, I think we share many of the same interests for traveling and eating, and so we connected with him well. And also Che Che treated us for lunch, so big thank you to Che Che. Uh, really cool place. We are now heading. I think we have about three more hours to drive to get back to Timpu now. We just passed through the pass and just a quick roadside stop to buy some local apples and also we saw some walnuts. So I will never miss an opportunity to buy some walnuts. This one you? It's okay, yeah? <laughs> and then what else you? Yeah. Oh this one is two hundred, this one's one fifty. We're about an hour away from Timpu City now, so that was a good stop. I'm gonna be eating some walnuts tonight. That was the highlight of my time so far in Bhutan. I really enjoyed staying in the farmhouses. Really, really a great way to experience Bhutanese culture when staying at the farm stays and living with a local family. The cold, Ying and I are not used to the cold, so it was a bit freezing cold for us, but still really good. And that was, yeah, extremely enjoyable. I wanna say a big thank you to Che Che who went with us for the entire trip. She's really cool, so big thank you to her. And also to Tenzin, our driver, really nice guy as well. And we had a great trip. And tomorrow we're gonna head off to Paro and see you tomorrow.